Today we're going to talk about the cost-benefit analysis. Whenever you have a potential project that you're thinking about implementing, it's always a good idea to find out the feasibility of the project. Your book talks about three different kinds of feasibility, technical, economic, and organizational feasibility. And today we're going to focus on the economic feasibility. In your homework too, there is a template called the cost benefit analysis template. I've downloaded that and we are now going to fill it out. So this is what it looks like. It has a couple of different parts. The first part is the total benefits row and the second part are the total costs. So we're going to count the costs and we're going to count the benefits. So I bought a little fixer upper a couple of years ago and I've been slowly and steadily remodeling different um, parts of the house. And now I've decided that I want to finish the basement. And so I'm going to run a cost benefit analysis on finishing my basement. Let's talk about the benefits first. There are two different types of benefits. There are tangible and intangible benefits. I'm going to add a couple of rows here above row number five and we're going to see if we can map out or monetize the benefits of my um, remodeling project. First thing that we're going to talk about are the tangible benefits. The first tangible benefit that I can think of is rent. I can rent out that studio apartment for about $650 a month. I'm going to calculate it to be filled 11 months out of the year just to be on the optimistic side. So let me key that in. If I charge $650 a month, for 11 months out of the year, that's going to be roughly $7,150. Then I want to project that benefit out over five years. I'm going to assume after the first year, the rent's going to increase to $7,250, and then it will increase $250 a year every year after that. Another one of the options besides just renting it out is to list it on Airbnb and rent it out per day. Let's say that I could make $65 per day and then it would be rented out 20 days out of the month. I live at the base of the mountain so during the winter I can rent it out for the skiers and during the summer I can rent it out for the hikers. If I project $65 a day, 20 days of the month, 12 months out of the year, this is going to give me $15,600. Let's say that it's going to go to $15,750 after the first year and then I'll increase it by $250. $250 a year after that. So I can either rent it out per month or I can rent it out per day. Um, I can't do both of them so I'm going to highlight this one in red because I would like to run the numbers on both and see which one is more valuable to me. Another tangible benefit that I can see is that I would have a room for my mother when she comes to visit me instead of putting her up in a hotel. My mother comes to visit me one week out of the year and I put her up in a hotel so um, the first year I'm going to save $300. Let's just do a $50 increase in that cost. Another tangible benefit is that I'm going to get help shoveling the driveway and splitting the firewood. Let's just say, for instance, that that's costing me about $400 a year. So these are my tangible benefits. Now I need to come up with intangible benefits. Well, one of the intangible benefits of having my basement completed would be that I am going to feel a lot better. I'm going to be happy that it's done and I will be able to realize my lifelong potential of delivering pizzas on the weekends. I'm going to be making $10 an hour, working 10 hours a week, plus tips. I figure that I can make about $150 a weekend. And if I calculate that over a year, that is going to be roughly $1,800 a year fulfilling my lifelong dream. I'm going to increase this $200 per year because while the price of pizza will go up, I also assume that my tips will go up. So I've listed the tangible and the intangible benefits of completing my basement. What I need to do now on row 13 or the row that has the TB or the total benefits, it's highlighted in yellow. I actually need to do an auto sum so that this column is calculating all of the benefits. And then I'm going to project that value out across the five years. Once I've completed my benefits, we're going to repeat the same process for the total cost. So there are two different types of costs. The first one is called developmental. This could be considered the one-time costs. The first of my one-time cost is going to be supplies. Things like um, tile and sheetrock. Now I already have all of my appliances, all of my cabinets, I have the light fixtures and so all I really need to begin with is going to be the tile 
and the sheetrock, but I'm going to calculate that to be $1,200. Now it's a one-time cost, and so once I have bought all those supplies, I'm not going to have to do that year after year. Another one of the one-time costs is going to be labor, and I'm going to assume that it's going to cost my contractor about $5,000, and another one-time cost is appliances because I don't actually have all of my appliances, one of the things that I know I need is a stackable washer and dryer. So I'm going to put in a cost of $1,000 for appliances. These are one-time costs, so I don't have to project these out over five years. Then the second type of cost is operational. These are the ongoing costs. The first operational cost is having somebody in my basement is going to increase my utilities. I'm going to calculate that it will increase the utilities by $50 a month. That means that this first year is going to be $600 and then I will do a $25 increase. The next ongoing cost is going to be a business license. In my town, if you're going to be making money out of your home, which includes renting out the space, you have to have a business license. I believe that costs $50 a month, and I'm going to be generous by saying that it will increase in price by $5 a year over five years. The next ongoing cost is going to be taxes. I'm going to have to pay taxes on the income that I make, and I'm going to assume 25% taxes. So I'm going to create a formula in here that's going to allow me to charge 25% on the income that I will be making. And so I'm going to assume that the income I'm going to make is, let's do the rent on the Airbnb. And then I am going to project that out over five years. Another one of the ongoing costs is going to be upkeep. I'm going to have to perhaps replace carpet or repaint or replace a refrigerator. And so I'm just going to calculate a 10% of the rent. I'll put in a savings account for any kind of maintenance or upkeep. Once again, I'm going to, I'm going to do a formula to calculate a 10% of the rent. I'm going to use the Airbnb rent instead of the monthly rent, just because that seems to be get me a little bit more income or a lot more income. I have now counted the developmental one-time cost and the operational ongoing cost and so once again I need to find the row that has the TC or the total cost and I need to make sure that this column is auto summing all of the costs above it. And then I need to project that calculation out over the five years. If we're going to project these values out over 10 years, we're going to have to take into consideration inflation because the value of my money today is not the same as the value of my money five years from now. And so if you move to line two in your spreadsheet, you're going to see something called interest. And this is going to be the inflation on our dollar value over our projected five years. And it is currently defaulted to two decimal places. I'm going to increase that value up to three decimal places so that I can change it from, <clears throat> let's say, currently it's set or defaulted to 3% inflation. I want you to notice that if I were to change it to 10% inflation, notice how my values change. I'm going to change it back to 2.5%. When you change that value around, you're really going to notice the difference that inflation can make in the value of your money. Another very important number on this spreadsheet is down at the bottom under the row that says ROI. That stands for return on investment. This means how much money do I have to spend in order to make money. If I have to spend $1,000 to make $10, that's not a very good return. But if I can spend $10 and make $1,000, that would be an excellent return. I want you to notice that in my total benefits, I see a number of $25,250. And my total cost is $13,310. That means that it costs me $13,000 to make $25,000. That is a very good return on my investment. That number gets even better as I project this out over five years because by five years I'm spending $6,000 to make $28,000. The last thing on this spreadsheet that we need to look at is this graph that has the blue line and the red line. This is called the break-even graph. This is going to show me when I am going to break even. If I spend a thousand dollars to remodel my basement so that I can charge rent, how long will it take me so that I can recoup or recover that thousand dollars? So the red line is the cost and the blue line is the benefits. When the two lines cross, that's going to show me when in time I am going to break even. Because the blue line and the red line never cross for this particular project, I can tell that I'm going to be 
immediately recouping the money that I spent to remodel the basement. Let's see what changes that I could make that would change this break-even point. Let's say, for instance, that I didn't have all of my supplies, and instead of $1,200 for my sheetrock, it was going to cost $12,000. And instead of $5,000 for labor, it was going to cost $15,000. And then I didn't have all my appliances, and so instead of $1,000, I'm going to have to spend $10,000. Notice how the red line and the blue line now cross somewhere right between the first and the second year. Within the first year, I'm going to reach my break-even point. That means the amount of money that I spent to remodel my basement, I will re recoup that money somewhere within the middle of the first year. Down on line 35, I can see where the graph changes from a positive number to a negative number. This is telling me where my break-even point will occur. So what happens if I decided to tile my basement in gold plates? Notice the difference it makes in my break-even graph. This would tell me, because the, the red line is always above the blue line, that I will never, or at least not in the five years that's displayed on this graph, that I will not recoup my initial investment. And so project managers can use this as a tool to decide whether or not they want to implement the project. Because not only does it have to be technically and organizationally feasible, it does have to be economically feasible as well. Let me know if you have any additional questions.